Welcome to Obstacle Running Adventures. I think there was eight stations of guns, <clears throat> so I never had to sit there and wait. Yeah, that's good too. Is it, it, it first come first serve, like with whichever station you wanted to get? Uh, yeah, because I pretty much hit the same exact station each time. Uh, they were telling people where to go that were in front of me because there was there was a uh, someone was at one and then they pulled them to go to the other one. So after that, then instead of going past the finish line, they made a loop where you go past it and go back into the starting corral and just keep going. Okay. And, and I heard that the penalty is almost like baked into that obstacle where if you miss, you keep shooting until you hit after a certain time. So, so how it, does that It blinks. So when it gets starts blinking rapidly, then it resets. And then you have like a, I believe a 20 second window of waiting before okay. it reloads again. Interesting. What so if you, you just kept on app, if you just kept on shooting and just hope that you hit it, you have a better chance. Cause I don't think anyone actually had to sit there and wait until it recharged. Okay. How, how heavy, like what would you compare the weight of the gun to? Cause oh, it actually felt like a real gun. It did. Okay. It, it, it had weight to it. Cause I was thinking like, I don't know what I was thinking. And then when I saw it, I'm like, Oh, it looks, it looks kind of <laughs> like a real gun. It looks like it, it's more weighty than I, I would have originally imagined. I think I sent a picture to Josh and one of the DJs put it in his hand and it was like, it was big. It was actually like a, it looked like a real gun and it had the, the weight on it. Interesting. Yeah. So that's... you shot it like a real gun except for they tell you to look at, so it didn't have a scope. It had like an arrow to keep trying to for focus. Mm -hmm. If you look between those then you can hit the target better. Okay. That's good to know. And then, um, what are your thoughts on, on this as an obstacle in obstacle course racing? I kind of like it. I mean, I'll, if they do it, I mean, Fridays are hard to try to get to a venue, especially yeah. if you're there for Saturday and Sunday, if they do it, um, either Saturday or Sunday, cause it went, it went quick. So if they did that on a Sunday and did that as the first wave, to get that out, then started the open waves and the age groupers. I think it will work. Or if they did it, um, the last wave. Okay. Because the the last one quick, like people are averaging like seven, eight, nine minutes. Yeah. So they did the girls, and then we followed behind and just kept on going and going and going. But huh. this time, the girls went first and almost went the whole distance. They went. On the third lap, they went halfway out. So by the time we got to their point, they're already finished. So then it was a sauce. It's hmm. very interesting. What um... if they if they switched up the obstacles every time they did the event, but kept it like that? I think that would be a game changer. Okay, that's good to know too. Yeah, I'm, I'm also bummed out about the whole Friday idea too, because I was thinking like, oh, Poconos. That's I've never made it out to, to that event. Um, not Poconos, Jesus. What's the uh, what in Pennsylvania? The hell, Palmerton. Palmerton. Thank you. Uh, they're having like the big event there, and I'm like, I, I can, I can get there, but I can't get there on a Friday, so it's going to be annoying to have to like miss all the the big events. So it'd be great if they could move it to a Saturday. I would, I would love that. Saturday or Sunday, like the when we did the one K, it didn't seem long at all. Okay, so it went quick. It's just when you have uh, when you're trying to do the qualifier 45, 45, that it takes a little bit of time for to see who um, qualified times are and then move to the next round. Yeah. So that was a little bit of process. How did they how did they communicate that with you guys? Did they just announce it over the loudspeaker or <laughs> like a big TV that showed like what everyone's time? So were? when we did the first two laps, when we came in, we gave the staff member our name. And then there was a time in right out there. So they were doing all the calculations. And then, I don't know, I think we sat around for maybe five or six minutes. And then Garfield called everyone's names. 
who moved on to the next round, but they also had a TV screen to see your placement. Okay. 